All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College, and as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD, or Application and Website Development Program, and in particular, the AWD 1112 Application Programming with Java class, I've been going through a series of video presentations that I'm doing for the two books used for the class. The first book being the one you see on screen now, that being Java Quick Syntax Reference, and I am up to... Chapter 5, which is on strings. Now, strings are not one of the eight primitive types that we talked about in the last lecture or so. In the last lecture, we talked about the four types of integer or whole number values, those being byte, short, int, and long. We also talked about the two different types of numeric variables which can have a decimal point, those being float and double. Finally, we talked about char, which is a single Unicode character, and Boolean. Those are the eight Java primitive variables. In other words, they can only hold a single value. Now, there is another type data type in here that's called string, but the string is a class. It's not a variable type per se. It's also a reference data type. And as it says here, this means that the variable contains an address to, you know, uh, to the string in memory and not the string itself. When you create a string, you can do it either one of these two ways. Virtually no one ever does it this way because it's more work. So you do it like this, string A equals double quote hello, double quote. You can combine or concatenate strings together using a plus sign or a plus equal, which we've looked at before. You can use escape characters within strings. The two you'll use the most often will be backslash N for new line and backslash T for tab. There are others, and most of them are shown right here. All right. Now, one thing about strings. All right, we looked at, you know, we were, let's see, do we still have our program up? I had to uh, shut the system down yesterday. I was running into problems, and so I probably lost what I was working on. But let's see. Yeah, this does not exist. Well, that isn't good. Is that it? And that doesn't exist. Okay. Look at that. So I may have lost all the work I did yesterday. Well, let's just do this. Let's start up a new Android Studio project. We will make it an empty activity. We will go to next. I'm going to call this more beginning Java programs. All right. Looks fine. I know I don't have anything by that name or anything nearly that long. So we've got this. See if I could have some more luck than what I had yesterday. All right. Now, I thought it was under source. Let's just try this. File, new, new module. All right, we worked on this yesterday. Java library, next. We've got to give that a name. More new Java programs. All right, and we call this my class yesterday. Let's call it my class two, just for something different. All right. Now, we don't need this activity here. Don't need either of those. But I do need to find where this 
probably where I saved this was the wrong place. So let's see. There's more beginning. I and I, that's not what I want. did it file new new module I did it I came in and I said Java library next gave it a name we gave it a class name See if we can see where this is going. Looks like right there. There we go. All right. <clears throat> what I want to show you after all of that is this. Now, in other programming languages, this will not be true in Java. In other programming languages, if I do this, if I say string. I always forget if it's upper or lower case, but string um, name one equals Jeff. String name two equals Jeff. Now I'm going to do something we haven't talked about yet, but if name one equal equal name two. Okay, I've got to put my public static void main in here and then throw that stuff in there and then I'll be fine. So let me grab this. There we go. So if they're the same, system.out.print, the strings are equal. All right. Else, the strings are not equal. Now I'm going to save this and run it. All right, and when I run it, it comes out and it says the strings are equal. Well, I'm surprised. It, in the past, it hasn't done that. All right. The way that you actually should check to see if two strings are the same in Java is you should say if name one dot equals name two. That's how this should be done. And you'll notice that if I do that, so I'm going to do a file save all again and I'm going to run it again, I get the strings are equal. All right. Technically, by doing this, if I come in here and I put in what I had before, if name one equal equal name two, technically they're not equal. What this says here is, do they point to the same place in memory? So, Although I didn't show you what I wanted to show you, which is I didn't think that would work when it did. When you are comparing two strings for equality, you should always do it like this and never do it like this. A little longer than I planned, but that, that's fine. Important lesson. See that? That's what they're saying there. This compares the strings, that compares the addresses. There's also strings are what are called mutable. So in other words, with what I just showed you, if I come down here later on and now I say 
name one equals Jeffrey instead of Jeff, all right, technically what happens is a new place in memory gets J-E-F-F-R-E-Y. Whatever this place was in memory, basically a message is sent to the system that that memory is no longer being used. So to say that strings are immutable, what that means is when you change a string, which you can do, you are changing the memory location that contains the string. Now, what if you want to make a string and you want that string to, I don't know, as it says here, hold a name. So let's do this. Let's come in here and do this. I'm going to show you two ways of doing something here. Now, I can come in here and say string first equals Jeffrey. String, let's make it a char just for something different. Char middle equals P. And string last equals Scott. Now, I can come in here forgetting, just forget about this equal things here. That's fine. Get rid of all that stuff. All right. So I'm going to have another string in here. I'm going to just call it full. And I'm going to set it equal to first plus a blank space. And recommended that you do it like that. Plus middle plus a blank space, plus last. All right, and then I'm going to say S out the full name is plus full. All right, let's work on that. File, save all, and run the program. And it has the full name is Jeffrey P. Scott, which is correct. All right. Now, that said, typically, when people are working with strings and combining things, they use string buffers because string buffers are mutable. So you can change things around with a string buffer. So I'm going to grab what they have in here and just show you another way of doing what we just did. All right. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to grab all of this stuff that we just put in, and let's comment it out. I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to get errors because i got a bunch of stuff in here I don't need. But string buffer SB equals new string buffer Jeff. All right. And then I'm going to append onto that string a P and then I'm going to append onto that string Scott. Finally I'm going to create a string S that is the two string got my semicolon here and I'll do an S out of S and let's see if I get the same thing Jeff P Scott well I didn't put Jeffrey let's try it again so I get Jeffrey P. Scott, all right? But this is considered a purer way of doing it because a string buffer allows me to use the same area in memory and have it expand and contract on an as-needed basis. If I decided I didn't want my middle initial in there anymore, I could come in and say SB dot delete all right I 
thought it was delete. Let's go back and look at the example in the book. Oh, okay, it's it's the characters that you want removed. So J E F F R E Y. So it's space. I think it's eight and nine, but we'll see. All right, and then let's try it again. I could have done it wrong. We'll see. Oh, it failed. Oh, I don't want to redo this. There we go. So I have Jeffrey P. Scott, and then I have Jeffrey Scott. Looks like I have one too many blank spaces in there. So I go from Jeffrey P. Scott to Jeffrey Scott. But I'm using the same area in memory as best as the system can do. All right? Use string buffers when you want to be able to manipulate strings. All right? Be back in just a couple. Start talking about arrays.